Diaz Gunners Collective. Back at it, you already know. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Uh. Here goes another one. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. She's like a what? Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. She's a torta with a snack habit. Bye, a guard. Bye, a bot. <laughs> hey, I'll start making all kinds of different sounds and shit, but trip out. And in menudo style in direct fashion, man, let's get straight to it. Because this one hurts my heart, right? Or does it? One never knows, does one. All I know for sure is uh, this is true stories and true facts, man. Um, you know, when I was a youngster, I looked up to certain homeboys. You know, when I came from NRCC, when I got to Y, we would go to NRCC, which was our reception for Northern California. Um, and I remember when I first got there, you know, I was looking around. I was looking around and I said, I had to make sure everything was everything, you know what I mean? I didn't see movies in it. So I said, hey, what this game of shorty, right? So I decided that if for no other reason, man, I would be on my toes. I would be on the tops of my nails, the tippy toes, because I had to see what was going on around me. You know, I was new to this, yet I was true to this. I was still new to this. And I advise anyone who's first incarcerated as a youngster, even older man, um, to be aware of what's going on around you. You know, that's how you're going to find out things. Anybody can lace you up. Anybody can tell you anything, but no one can actually prepare you for what's to come, you know, because everybody has a different path they take. So anyways, I got there and I had my little chest out, my little bird chest, you know, I was a young kid. I thought I was bad, man. Couldn't no one tell me shit. You see them kids on Scared Straight? That was me. So I don't give a fuck, eh? What'd you say? Oh, shit, right? One of them, you know, getting slapped up, you know, big homeboys trying to tell me, listen, but I'm also right. If you're going to go that route, go that route. Hardcore. Um, and I did my thing. So anyways, I remember once I got to NRCC meeting a lot of good homies, you know, from San Jose, Sacramento, Stockton, Merced, other homeboys that I did, wasn't really affiliated with. Um, and I felt right in place. I felt the canalismo. I felt like, hey, okay, I could do this. I could do this, man. I had a Sally from Fresno who really laced me up in the game and gave me some good ideas and some good clecha. And I was like, okay, it's cool. And then they hit me with the bamboozleization, right? The bamboozle was, you're taking your ass down south, Southern California. And you guys all know the story because I told you, I pulled up, man, and, and it was on and cracking. And I had no choice, okay? I had no choice. Whatever happened there, happened there. Um, the smashalization was real both ways. We were at war with Southern California. We, are, we were at war with the Southsiders, man, and that's a fact, okay? Um, some guys didn't make it. Some guys, uh, uh, you know, did everything they can to get back up north. But me and my little crew who I was with, we decided that for no other reason, we were trying to body something um, to get back up north. We thought we were bad. You know, the shit never stops. Once you get a little comfortable and you become complacent, then you decide, man, that if for no other reason, you're that one and you could do that. Um, anyways, we were on some different times, some different shit. Um, and I met some good homeboys. Now, I remember righteously when I first got there, I was looking around and I wasn't impressed, man. And what I mean by not, I'm sure they're not impressed by me. And I wasn't, it goes both ways, right? And I wasn't impressed by them. I was like, damn, most of these North Angeles, most of the guys that are here are coming straight from NR. They're coming from NRCC. Um, a lot of them haven't been around. You know, they haven't been to other uh, uh, YAs at that time. So they're not really seasoned. You know, back in them days, it wasn't prison. It was Y, so they just weren't seasoned. Um, so we were kind of all just like, it was just fillers. Like, fuck, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? You know, we're down here. We know we got to get off where we're mad at, but at the same time, man, you know, we, we ain't trying to catch more time and do all that. It just was a whole, it was hard to fucking balance yourself on that trampoline. You know, you just had to jump. You just had to jump. Um, anyways, after about the second or third busload of Northerners that got there, a busload rolls up. And this one has a lot of seasoned bottles. Bottles like Soldier Boy from Stockton, Shadow from Richmond, and several others, right? And this was the one busload where we were like, we could breathe better. These guys were seasoned in the game. Like I said, they were coming from different institutions. They had been around. They knew what it was to battle um, and to go through the things that we were going through. They were going to lace us up. We were going to look at them in the leadership, the leadership role. They were basically going to be the ones to guide us to the promised land or whatever the fuck. Try to get back up north. Try to stab one of the and get on, right? Um, and I remember I took to these homeboys close, man. It's like, hey, real righteous dudes. Man, they got hands. These vatos... They just know what time it is, you know, and they came in with a chip on their shoulder. They definitely came in uh, pulling their weight. You know, there's no doubt about that. I know a lot of people will sit there and say, well, that's kitty time. Eat it, eat it. That's old school. And it was. But it's something that's near and dear to my life. Right. And, and a, a role that I played uh, and, the, you know, the, the role got played to the fullest. So anyways, 
one of these guys that rolled up on that bus load, man, um, he became a good homeboy, Taita, close, a close one. I had a lot of love for him, right? And I remember the day, and this vato was crazy. You know, this is the type of individual would go in the day room and just take flight on anyone. And he was an intimidating fella because, not because of his size. I mean, he had nice size, but he was more intimidating just by his actions, the way he carried himself. Vatos were confused. Vatos were like, hey, watch out for that right thing. You know what this? You're 51, 50, and he's a J cat, right? And it wasn't that. It was just he didn't care. He was applying pressure. He was serious about his Norteño game. Um, he went in there like, hey, bro, I ain't going to let any of these Vatos tell me nada. I don't care if it's their backyard or whatever. That just was the impression I felt. That's the way he was. Um, and it wasn't that Vatos were punks and weren't handling their business. They were trying to take this cat out. He just had major hands and pretty much everyone he fought, man, um, he would put them on their pockets. So anyways, uh, we became very close, man. I like this style. But one thing I noticed very early on in meeting him was that he showed predator tactics. No, no, no. Not like going out there and trying to bone someone, right? But predator tactics and like, even if you were a homeboy from up north, he didn't give a shit. If he wanted your shoes, he'd take them. If you like the fucking sweater that your mom sent in a package, he was going to go ahead and need that. He was a bully. Okay. A bully with a fully and someone that was slick with it, had mouthpiece and game. So he would talk to you about your shoes. Hey, Sasuke, look, I got a receipt that kind of bar your Cortez is, eh? The little homie would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What size you wear? He's like, I wear 10, but Sasuke, what are those? Eight and a half? I'll make them fit. Them type of shoes, he'll put them on, go to visiting. And then the homie would be like, hey, bro, was it a good visit? He'd be like, hell yeah, it was great, bro. Hey, then I was shining with them shoes on. Even the mother about were looking at me, bro, from the other side. It was cool, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, can I have my shoes back? What shoes? Right? The Vato was on his Debo shit. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and act like back then I wasn't laughing with them because I was, right? We weren't on our bully shit. We weren't trying to bully our own rasa but at the same time man that's just how it was it was survival of the fittest and some people got in and some people didn't um and it's unfortunate to say that and i wish it never was like that and even now man when i run into people that that i did dirty or i did wrong back in them days man i make amends to them like hey spencer man um i was young i was dumb it's just the way it was you know you know how it is anyone that was in white they knew how it was in the 90s no one gave a fuck they just take your shit from you and beat you up so anyways Time presses. And I remember the day that they told this Valtoe, hey, you're getting up out of here. I don't know if they finally, the administration finally got tired of his bullshit, but they told him one day, roll it up, you're up out. And that's just how it was, man. It wasn't that people were fucking being sneaky behind people's backs and trying to escape. I mean, there were those that put in little kites and had their moms cry, call cry. <laughs> My son, he got a stand in the school area. They were doing whatever they had to do. Hey, we didn't know about it, so it was what it was. But I know that I never got that action right. Later on, I ended up getting transferred. I didn't even, they just came to my door like, roll it up, puto. And that was it. Um, but anyways, he gets moved. And I remember saying, damn, we just lost a real one. We just lost somebody who was really about the, nor the Northern cause. And also, man, you know, someone who, who had major hands. We took a, it took a step back. It was a big, a big loss, you know. And when you're in YA or you're in prison or you're doing time, and if you have that one homeboy that's on your compa on your, on your, in your building or whatever, that's got major hands, you know, when he leaves, people start getting braver. People start saying, oh, okay, he talked all that shit, huh? Oh, you wanted my shoes? Fuck me. Nah, fuck you. Right, Theo? And they're on it. Um, anyways, he leaves. And there were a couple guys that had attempted to, you know, act a little funny. And, uh, you know, we weren't going out like that. We just had to defend ourselves. Anyways, years pass, man. A couple years passes, and this guy ends up in Carl Holton. And I end up going to Carl Holton. I went from press. They, sh they rolled me up like, hey, time to go. I didn't want to go, man, because one of my homeboys from my water was there. But I had no choice, man. I tried every tactic I can. I'll fuck you. I'm going to get off, right? Whatever. They'll put me in the oil, snatch me up. You're going. Roll it up, right? That's just how it was. So I'm on my, on my way to Preston. I've told you guys the story. I go to Preston. I'm there for fucking about six, seven months. And eventually what happens is they end up sending me to Carl Holton. I had a drug program that ended up changing that whole Carl Holton uh, YA to a drug program facility. The reason I had a drug program, like so many others, not that we were drogueros and we were all spun out, right? I had nothing to do with that, gente. What it had to do with was a manipulation tactic, kind of like King Bao when he said he was a, a, a hotito and was sucking chorra so he can get off the deck. It was something like that, only not quite that, right? We would tell him, hey, we got a drug program and hoping that we can go to OH clothes or hoping we can go to institutions that we wanted to because it was just better there. It was cool. It was calm. It was collect. It was correct. And we kicked it. No. Backfire game, right? They sent my ass to Nellis and they just kept sending me from Kennedy to Madison. Madison to Kennedy, right? That was the drug program there. And the drug program consisted of a fucking packet here. Toma, do it or don't, bitch. And that's just what it was. You know, no one cares. 
At the end of the day, none of them adults, really, maybe one or two, but none of them cared. It was what it was, man. They just maced us, wait till the mace fucking ran out, and then led us back to the main line, and then maced us again, because we were going to get involved in some shit. Just how it was. Now, I can give you the real about the 90s of CYA. I don't know if many others can, because that's how it was. You know, there was no love. You were it was flowers in the attic, homes. Here, you'll get food. You'll get a bed to sleep in. You also get a fucking a thing to make a fucking shank with, but you're not going to get no love. There's no one to cry to, no one to PC up to, no one to do none of that. You're on your own. Orale, Michael Bolton, or who's the saying that? Michael McDonald. You're on your own, like a Patti LaBelle song. And that's it. So you better hold on like in Vogue because motherfuckers is coming. Um, so anyways, now I'm up north, northern California. Now my chest is really out because now I'm home. Now I'm in headquarters. Now I'm where there's nothing but northerners. It's reverse. Okay, now southerners are the ones on the short end of the stick. But me, having gone through so many things I went through and befriending a lot of Southsiders and knowing their character, knowing the way that they move, man, you know, I took a liking to these individuals. They were cool. They were cool, man. Um, you know, a lot of them didn't have beef with me on the personal tip. It was business as usual. Anyways, I get up north and I meet a whole bunch of guys that I was in Nellis with down south, little way from Puente, Johnny Wood for Pomona, 12th Street Sharks, and several others, man. And I tell them, hey, look, coming from me to you and you to me, bro, it's all good in the hood. We did what we had to do down there to survive La Onda style. But over here, bro, if you want that smoke, you can get it. But if you don't, bro, let's just do our time. And for the most part, man, I'm not going to lie. North and South coexisted. That was like kind of like the, the, the first time that I ever seen. I ain't going to say unity, Raza, but I will say we played handball together. We did several things, man. It wasn't it wasn't fighting all the time. Everyone kind of kicked back. The Southerners were about their business there, too. Don't no one sleep on them. When I say they, they were down to do their thing, they were down to do their thing. And I don't take nothing from anyone, north or south. One thing I'm going to say for sure is everybody was down to fuck your whole world off. Now, let's fast forward to this guy. The guy we're talking about. The one who got turned out, whose school will never be the same again. You know, I happened to run into this guy from down that I was down south with. You know, he was a northerner. Um, and we ended up being on Mona Hall together. Mona Hall was a, a building at Carl Holton. And when I got there, man, there was already several Northerners there, about 30. So I slid right in. And because he was one of the main guys there, not no shot caller, but everyone kind of looked to him for advice and things of that nature. This was my homeboy from over there in Nellis. This is my boy. I said, ah, oh, man, what's cracking, bro? He was like, damn, you made it. You made it. Slightly faded, but you're here. I said, I'm here, eh? How was the program? He's like, it's good, bro. We run this whole shit. Don't even trip. What that ain't like it was. What the? We can do whatever. Leave your hey, shirt on, shirt off, whatever, right? All that is. You, you guys were leaving your shirt on? Fans, I wasn't, right? So he's cool, but then same bullying tactics are happening. Taking homeboy's shoes. Now homeboys are getting dropped leva. You know, there's a whole bunch of outcasts over there. And let me tell you, let me run you down about the word leva, because I hear everyone speak on it and talk about it. Um, there was a lot of people that got dropped level just because. Now, the word level means like a punk, a bitch, someone that really ain't about that, right? And most people got dropped level on the content of their character, you know? If they didn't participate in a riot or melee, um, if they decided to lay it down, they got caught saying too Whatever the case may be, man, there was always a reason for it for the most part, right? But there were bottles, and just like it is nowadays, bottles that get whacked or removed, because they hit the wrong yard, man, and someone pushes up on them, whether it be dirty politics or whatever, they just don't like them. You know, he bones someone's old lady or his sister back in the day, says, yeah, and she tasted like tuna sandwiches. I don't know. He expressed that. The Vato expressed hatred. And next thing you know, you're not in a position to fight it. And you're out, right? That's it. Same thing in YA, only you didn't get whacked. Sometimes you got jumped, stomped out. But once you were leva, you were no longer able to participate in the Ranger games. You were outcasted, ostracized. You were no longer... Uh, a firme raza. That's what the Southerners called it down south. Firme raza, basically. Um, and it was the same thing up north. We just didn't put them words on it. It was kind of like, hey, bro, you ain't, we ain't fuck with you. And that's it. All canteen privileges, out. Anything you got, bottles were, were subject to take it. Um, shoes, by my nose, right? Hey, you, I see bottles right there that make them shave half their head and half their mustache and look like a poop butt, right? They would play with these individuals. There's a lot of YA games that went on. Anyways, the homeboy at this time... Uh, was one of those guys to apply pressure. He was one of those guys to bully people. You know, everything that they got, he would take. I mean, he liked that. He rather enjoyed it. And that showed me the predator tactics of him. I mean, I didn't really like that. You know, he was a good homeboy. He was down. He'll beat anybody up that fucking wanted that smoke. 
He was a righteous Northenial, but at the same time, I didn't believe at that time in hurting our own people. I didn't believe on dropping a homeboy Leva just because he was young and didn't know what was up. I believed in building him up, man. We might need him. Holmes, he's a soldado. He need, he's looking to us for guidance because we're seasoned. We've been around for a minute. And this Vato don't know nothing. He's coming straight from reception. And he's like a deer in the headlights, eh? And here we are to say, give me your shoes, Toms. Right? <laughs> we're just bad. Um. Anyways, I'm not going to lie to you, man. When this guy ended up paroling, I was happy. I was happy, you know, in the beginning, like I told you in LS, I was kind of disappointed and sad when we lost him because that's when we really needed him. We were in the trenches like a motherfucker. But now we're in Northern California and we're deep, right? So when this guy paroled, I ain't going to lie, almost everyone in the compa, we acted like we were throwing a party for him paroling, but we were really throwing a party for him paroling. Get your ass up out of here, homes. Even though you're a good homeboy and I got a lot of love for you, man, uh, Sasuke, you, you, you be doing homeboys bad, man. He was just a bandito, someone that, that we really didn't need there, um, and the compa was better off without him. So anyways, he pressed on. Life takes you in different directions, and I eventually get out. And like I said, man, I've told many stories how my life went, um, and that was just that. So years go by, you know, and every once in a while, you know, just like anyone else, when you're kicking with your homeboys, you're pisteando, you guys are drinking, throwing a carne asada, trying to bone fucking the homegirl's torta, homegirl. You know what I mean? We're all trying to just win and live a little, right? 280, that's a maybe. 290, mm, I'm on the grinding. 300, fuck it, let's get it, run it. You know, and that's just what it is. So I'm chilling, living my life, and every once in a while chopping it up with the homeboys, his name will get mentioned. Because one thing I found out was that he found himself incarcerated in prison, um, just like I did. You know, he was, I guess he did a term and got out. I did terms and got out. And that's just the way it was. Um, but what I found out through the grapevine was that his brother, and I remember this Volta was always, he always looked up to his brother. Every war story involved his brother. His brother was very well known out of the city of Sacramento, Sacra. Um, and he was very close to his carnal. So anyways, from what I heard, the swerve on the curve was that Hescarna actually got killed. And when Hescarna got killed, man, this Vato went 51-50, J-Cat, and just decided to kill everybody, right? Anyways, he catches a murder case and gets locked up. Um, and, and that's part of life, especially in California. You already know the wiggle, man. Vatos don't make it too long, man. If you're really in the game and things happen, Vatos are quick to knock and buck fast. Anyways, so when I heard it, hey, I wasn't surprised. I was like, wow, maybe I'll run into him one of these days. One never knows does one. At that time, I was in and out of prison. That was part of the agenda and part of the game. So anyways, several stories get told about this guy. And then stories start to flip and change. You know, I run into a couple of homies that are like, hey, bro, I mentioned his name. They're like, si, pobre, si. That what the had his fucking culo. And he didn't give up And had it up to that bastard. And I make it. So I'm scared. What's so ugly? I'm like, what happened? So eventually what I hear over time is this Vato um, gets moved on and gets removed from the mainline, from general population. And like so many other stories, man, you just, it just happens. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, little puppy. It's going to happen, right? Um, But what I find out is he starts, uh, you know, involving himself in the reindeer games. Um, You know, he changed his pronoun. Let's just say that. You know, he uh, transmissions shit. Real life, right? Um, So I hear these stories. I'm like, nah, never. I don't want to hear it. My ears are shut to it. Um, I see several pictures. Uh, duck lips and things of that nature and, and still man i turn a blind eye to it because i don't want to see that it's not that i hate on all that and everything that's none of my business but at the end of the day man i don't remember him that way it's like come on bro you could be a fucking bully you could be this you could be that but god damn bro clench your ass cheeks one time for your mind you're supposed to be a pedazo in a pack of frowns not a fucking blind one you can't stop anyways this guy gets turned out and um I try to justify by saying, you see the picture and the catch, right? It doesn't matter, man. Uh, turned inside out is turned inside out. You know what I mean? His guts will never be the same. So help him God. Anyway, and help him. He needs it. So anyways, this fall, I start hearing these stories, but still I don't want to believe it. I don't want to believe it because this is someone who I righteously looked up to at one point in time. This is someone who, you know, I patterned for a minute my gangsterism after. And I was like, damn, run, damn what happened? Needless to say, it happened, right? The other day, I'm on the phone with a good, righteous homeboy from our audio. Now, this homeboy right here has been around the block three times in the 6'4 on flat tires. He's done it. He's done it all. Been to several prisons. And this guy's name gets mentioned again, you know, like so many over so many years. Um, we're telling why stories because he was also why, but way after me because he's younger. Um, and then he's like, hey, bro, I was on the yard with that fool uh, when he was righteous, bro. He was like, yeah, yeah. Everything you say is facts. He goes, bro. But uh, yeah, he, he, he definitely was indulging in. 
and mud wrestling. And I was, what? Saturday? He was like, yeah, I bought those in there fucking baby oiled up. And it broke my heart. But at the end of the day, man, that's the world we're living in, gente. You know, Valtas, you think, oh, that Valtas fucking down. That Valtas going to be somebody when he grows up. That Valtas right there don't take no shit from nobody. Nah, but they're all up. His shit is all up on someone's. It's just different, right? I mean, it broke my heart, but several people get turned out in prison. I want to tell you one more story. Anyways, hey, what comes to pass is that Valtas is, is doing funny things now. And it breaks my heart, man. Um, but it is what it is. You know, he's living his life. He's in there. Um, maybe he decided that's the way he's going to be comfortable, right? <laughs> I don't know. The wind's blowing in the cell, right? Hopefully, turn a fan on. Let's say it smells like caca in the tira. Spends on the tira. Anyways, when I was in Nellis and CYA, um, I always revert back to one of the hardest brothers, man, that was there, you know, at that time. I remember, and I'm going to say his name, man. His name was Monk from East Coast Crib. Right, Monk was was with the activity darker than a month. That Valter looked like Michael Blackson before Michael Blackson looked like Michael Blackson. Right, that Valter was a dark right there. You know what I mean? Um, can barely see him. Cool as fuck though. Cool hinted man down. Well known. Putting enemies on their backs. Major major super duper hands. And I remember I used to see him. He'd be playing basketball and he was just like another any other brother man. You know, and we slept. Our, our we had the short wall, the tall wall, and we slept like in the middle of the short wall. And he ended up getting moved to a cell. Well, needless to say, he gets moved to a cell. One night, one of the night ladies is walking by doing count. Or she's not doing count. She's just checking on him. And next, you know, all the lights pop up. It's like one or two in the morning. She's screaming like fucking someone just tried to hurt, uh, hit her. And we're all, we all jump up already. All the northerners are like, what's up, sir? Right? The south siders are like, put us on. Right? Everyone's ready to get it. Needless to find out, this guy Monk was in there getting fucked by his celly, Right? Uh, I remember everybody in the, in the school area. I mean, hey, we actually ceased all fighting for about three days so we could fucking wrap our minds around it, right? That's what ended up happening. Valta comes back, he's full-blown transmission now. Now they they put him in the first bunk right there in the shore wall, right in front, so they keep an eye on his culo. And that's how it was. True stories, facts. I'm not here trying to belittle anyone's hood or their body. It was the way it, fuck, way it fucking was, right? Valtos get turned out in there, man. I, I, I hate to say it, it happens. It's not like the movies, man, where you watch it, you're like, hey, fuck, everyone's in there getting boned. Nah, it's not like that. Um, Valtos that, you know, Hey, you just don't know what happens, man. Up in that, what goes on the cell stays. It's like mini Vegas, right? What happens, happens, eh? Um, but I know that it was really a heartbreaking situation for me that a homeboy of that stature, his trajectory was up, you know? I seen him really hardcore, man. Like I said, I seen him punk almost every person on that compa up out their shoes. They thought that had more Cortezes than Nike did, right? He was really doing that. But at the end of the day, man, seasons change and so do mentalities, I guess. Next thing you know, he's doing that. Now, I wouldn't whoop on anyone, anyone's name and throw him up under the bus, man, if I didn't know these to be facts. But I'm telling you, I heard these stories several years ago, man. People mentioned it. And um, wow, that's all I can say. You know, I'm not mentioning his name, but it is what it is. With that being said, gente, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming to you. Remember, at the end of the day, man, it's all about the struggle. These are stories I tell because these are actual true stories. You know, people will sit here and try to act like fucking being in prison and being in jail is the shit. They get out, all of a sudden, like Crip Mac, lose a little bit of weight. And listen here, Custer, on 55th, they're hardcore now. All of a sudden, on Crip, right? They're doing all that. They're fucking fucking with other rappers, old ladies. And they just think they're the shit, right? But they don't want to tell you about when the two got knocked out or when they got beat up over here or they got drug over there. You know, people only want to tell the stories that make them look good and not the real stories. It's just what it is, man. I will sit here and tell you the truth, man. I was the biggest, baddest, meanest, roughest, toughest gangster when I was in YA or prison, right? But I maintained, and that's all I had to do. Thumbs up or thumbs down. See, heaven's going to be the head that wears guns crown. I'm going to continue to strive and struggle and struggle and strive for what I honestly and truly believe in, and that's giving you guys real, actual, factual stories. I know people might not like this one, but it just is fucking what it is. The gun. Bangladesh.